Hey guys, it's Janelle here again. Welcome to my channel. Today, in this video, we are going to be painting all sorts of different types of flowers using alcohol inks and alcohol markers, specifically the Bic ones. Which brings me to my next point. If you don't know, I am having a giveaway on my YouTube channel and you need to keep watching to find out the details but I have some things to give away one of them is this pack of markers plus a whole bunch more here so I'm going to be picking two winners none of these have been used I just had to open up the pack um, none of these have been used and I'm going to be splitting all of this amongst two people plus you will each get a marker Pad. This is specifically for markers, alcohol markers. I have a couple of Copics that I want to give away and a couple of Artist Loft ones and uh, a blender. I have another blender on its way to me in the mail. I just don't have it here yet. And for those of you who have watched me use alcohol inks before, you know that I use a blending brush, so I am going to be giving the winner a blending brush. I have blending fluid here, and I think there might be something else, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, here's some alcohol inks. So those will go in this, I have this basket of stuff here that I have, I put all my stuff that is gonna be for upcoming giveaways in there. So um, I have some more stuff to stick in there yet, but I'm just going to put this off to the side. Oh, and you'll also get some paper uh, that I use for doing different alcohol inks, like this one and, and different ones. Um, this is Kirkland Photo Paper. I use this instead of Yupo. I actually like it better than Yupo, and it's cheaper than Yupo. So there you go. So let's get started on this. I am going to be doing it in kind of a time-lapse narrating style because I'm doing as many flowers as I can in this video and I just don't wanna take too long. And with the blowing and everything, that can just be fast forwarded, but you'll still be able to see it and I'll still narrate it. So I'm just gonna fill up my blending brush. Nah. I can remember how this works. There we go. So some brushes, um, they say to be careful with alcohol in them, and some say it's fine. So this one is fine, and hopefully the ones you get will be fine. Um, I'm also going to be using this curved kind of skinnier straw, and then I have a couple of variations of fatter straws, and it just depends on what kind of petal shape you want. You can also just blow it yourself with your mouth, or you can use canned air, or you can use an air gun. So there's a few different options for that. If you haven't seen my video where I have used these already once before, then check that out. I'll put the link right there. And I also have a different marker review, which you can check out. And um, yeah, so let's get started. The first one we're going to do is a cornflower. So basically what I've done to kind of help myself along here is I've just kind of googled variations or varieties of flowers and just thought, you know, I'll try which one. I'll look at different pictures and see which ones look good. So we are going to do this cornflower one here. And sometimes I've had people ask me over time um, if I use photos as inspiration and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. So I am just starting with the center and I am just going lighter and then adding some darker bits in there as well and I'm just going to uh, draw the shape. Sometimes I work in stages of the flower depending on what I want to keep and what I you know, I'm okay with blending more, but I'm just drawing the whole shape of the flower. And as you can see, very simple. You just need to draw some main shapes. And then I'm just filling it in with 
some light blue and you can see it's even blending there. Um, the biggest thing with alcohol ink is to let it dry and know what to do in its different drying processes. It's different drying stages. So it goes through some different stages that will give you different effects um, depending on what you do and when you do it. So you can see some of those stained marks there, but that's okay because we're going to use my blending brush here to uh, kind of disguise them a little bit. And uh, um, when the alcohol ink is drying, you can do some more specific shapes. I mentioned this um, again later on in the video, um, but here you can see how it works. Basically, I'm using the blending solution because it's drying a little bit, so it's giving me some more shapes. And then as it's drying, as that new stuff blending solution is drying, then it kind of blends, to more, uh, blends some more. But I can go over it and keep going over it until it's completely dry. And you can also use the straw to help dry it along. You just got to be careful not to do it too, too closely or too strong because it will blow the ink if that's not what you want to do at that time. So really just experiment and don't get frustrated because you will figure out what works and uh, you just you kind of got to go by feel with this. And it's really not that complicated. It really isn't. It might look like it is, but it's not. So please don't be intimidated by alcohol ink or this kind of style. It's very simple and very fun. And you just have to be patient, especially at the beginning. Um, and you can erase some things there. As you can see, I'm just taking a Kleenex and wiping, doing some negative sh to make the shape. So the next flower I'm going to do here is a cone flower. It's also called Echinacea, I believe. So I'm just starting with the center. Uh, we're gonna, it kind of droops down. So I'm just starting with some yellows and some oranges and some darker kind of red at the bottom. And I just want to start out with the bottom of this circle area darker. <clears throat> and then I'm going to blow that out upwards. If you want, um, you can just, if you want to keep the yellow more yellow, then you would blow that out before you put in the darker color at the bottom. I just wanted a little more interesting shape and I can always add more yellow if I want to later. And then I'm just drawing my petal shapes. And as you can see, I'm just doing this very like not technical not very carefully it's really it's it's really easy to do this and then I'm just gonna fill in these petals with a little bit lighter pink to um, just fill them in <laughs> and then I'm going to be putting a little bit of uh, purple more purple colored stripes in them just because all this ink kind of moves together and can just form some really cool combinations. Sometimes you don't know what it's gonna, sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes you can get some really cool effects. So I just like to put in all the colors that I might wanna use in there, just to see what I can get. And many of these uh, flowers that I'm painting for you, I actually haven't done these specifically like this before. So um, some of this is, and even if you, I've done it 20 times before, it's always going to be different because it's it's ink um, and same with watercolor you know you have to be prepared for some surprises and I'm just putting down a little bit of blending solution sometimes with certain flowers I'll put down more but I want to control it a little bit more so I'm putting down just a little bit of blending solution other flowers I might put down like a big drop and then just blow it out and whatever happens happens and then sometimes I just try to control it more with the brush. So as I said already, the different drying stages it goes through gives you different effects that you can use. So um, 
even when it's completely dry, you can rework it a little bit with the blending solution. And so sometimes I'm drying it as much as I can with the straw because I either need to, you know, draw a whole nother petal like I had to do there because I didn't like that petal. So I basically just erased it. Um, and then other times uh, it, you just want to put more shape into it. And you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just adding a little bit. I'm not really squeezing too much out of the brush, but I really want that center to just be really interesting and, and show all the little things that are coming out of it. And, uh, and I wanted to make the bottom a little bit darker. So I do want this flower to be a little bit more loose and not so, you know, formed, uh, because that's how I like my flowers to be anyways, even in watercolor and stuff. By the way, a lot of these things can work with watercolor. You're just not going to be blowing it, although you could try. Um, lots of people do use that kind of technique with watercolor. And you can also try this with different kinds of inks, not just alcohol inks. Alcohol inks just do a certain thing um, when they interact with each other, they kind of push each other out of the way and the blending solution pushes it out of the way. So when you're using other inks, they're not necessarily going to react the same way. And it also depends on the surface that you're using. So I'm just trying to loosen it up and, and kind of define some of the edges and loosen up some others. And that's all that I'm trying to do here. I'll just make it look more interesting. And this next flower is a pansy. And I want to try the yellow colors because um, I just want to and I'm not sure how much how well it's going to show up. So I'm just got a few different shades of yellow and then I've got a, a little bit of a sienna there, a burnt sienna. So that's, that yellow is just the very center of the flower. And I've got some dark brown and then like a burgundy that I'm using to do those, um, I don't even know, the center going out. And actually that already looks really cool. Um, but then when I add this, it kind of goes away for a little bit. But you can see I'm basically just drawing the, the main shapes of a pansy and um, yellow can be a little bit tricky because it can fade. So the lighter yellow was kind of, that uh, didn't really work for anything. And you can see that um, the colors already kind of blend with each other. So I just have a little bit of blending solution there and I'm just working it, trying to be pretty careful because I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't want that, the dark to go into the yellow too much. I just want it to fade into there, but I really want that yellow to show. And um, I'm pretty happy, except you will see that that one petal there just blew out completely. And I kind of struggle a little bit with it, but I'm really happy with how my center looks. The dark colors streaking out looks amazing as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just trying to figure out what to do with that darker color and just adding in some yellow. But you kind of have to make sure that alcohol is completely dry before you add in more because uh, it won't work if you do it on alcohol that is not dry. So I added in some more yellow and it's still not really doing what I want. And I don't even have an explanation why. And you'll find that with watercolor. So don't get frustrated if that happens. Um, you could just leave it. I mean, it still looks cool, but I'm really trying to just do a pansy here. <laughs> so I went with some actual alcohol ink um, to drop in there because I thought that would be more intense. And well, I didn't like that either. Um, and all of this can be really cool. It's just not what I wanted to do. And so when you have a specific look in mind, just be really patient because you might not get it. And you might have to work at it, or you might just have to be satisfied with whatever you do get. Um, I think I eventually get something here that I'm satisfied with. Um, 
but it it takes me a little while so first of all I got to clean up that mess and then um, I think I add some yellow in here and it really is just you just keep working it and I mean I, the reason why I kept going was because I loved how the other petals turned out so I knew that I could get this really good if I just got just could get that yellow back in there properly and so look, I think I did get it here finally we'll see <laughs> I'm narrating this after the fact That's, if you couldn't tell so the next flower here is of course a rose I have to do a rose um, you've probably seen I have many roses I've done and I think I have some water, more watercolor rose videos to edit and upload um, but I needed to try this and I've actually never done this uh, before this video but I painted a watercolor rose lot so I figured you know what I'm just gonna try it um, with alcohol ink because I got to paint a rose so what I'm doing is I'm just doing the shadows of a rose basically doing negative drawing I'm, I'm drawing the darker areas and I'm using an orange and then I put some pink in there just to I don't know lighten it up a little bit and then this is just the outside shape I was like okay well enough dark shadows I want to keep the dark shadows to the middle so there's my outside shapes and now I'm just taking a very light kind of peachy pink and just filling this in again please don't think this is super technical it's honestly like if you actually look at what I'm doing I'm not even being very careful at all so if you practice getting those shadows in there just just draw some weird shaped triangles and some really like stretched out triangles think of everything as triangles and then those those other kind of longer ones they're like messed up triangles they're like flattened triangles does that make sense <laughs> Now I'm taking the blending brush and I'm trying to create some really crisp edges because I really want, you know how roses have those like really cool edges sometimes? I realized with my videos I use the word cool a lot. I'm sorry, I have to fix that because I can't describe everything as cool. Like I'm not 13. I don't even know. Do 13 year olds do that? Probably not. Um, just the fact I have to ask that question is sad. Uh, so... I'm basically making this look like an ink uh, painting instead of a drawing with you know Vic markers and I actually really I think this is my favorite flower of all the ones I've done in this video um, like it looks cool right there like I just I love it and then I thought I gotta add some greenery <laughs> because why not like yeah as I'm looking at this while I'm narrating it I'm really liking how that rose turned out I gotta say um, and then I just want to add some greenery because I have to um, and then you know I thought okay that can be where I blow out some colors because it doesn't look like it's an inky it doesn't look loose it doesn't look you know it looks good but I still like the looseness so I thought okay well I'll put some greenery in there and blow that out a little bit and then I thought no I gotta blow out some of the rose too so I did that and I actually really like how it just be careful just add a little bit at a time because you don't want to you'll see when I do the tulips that there's one they were good and then I, I added too much blending solution so just be careful how much you're using and if I say ink I'm probably meaning blending solution um, yeah and I actually I really like how this rose turned out like it's the perfect amount of looseness and tightness and um, yeah I want to try this with some other colors and see what happens and here I am doing some fuchsia just because it's a very interesting shape and I thought why not try this so obviously I'm using pinks and purples because um, that's the only color these flowers come in so it'd be weird to do them in any other color and um, yeah I'm just doing you know some kind of weird shape it really doesn't have to be the right shape um, just the general whatever is fine 
because you don't want these to look very specific. And then I'm just drawing a bunch of purple clumps underneath, really. Um, this this one is kind of self-explanatory. Um, I'm I just drew the whole flower. I thought, why not? Rather than you know draw it in stages, I thought I'll just do it. And then I wanted to do the purple clumps, and I really like how that the ink petals and creates like a really dark edge you know in there so I really like how that one turned out the second one didn't turn out quite as good but you know you get what you get and then um, the top just kind of just kind of loosened up and um, I think I went over it with the brush as well and I'm just kind of going over those little things that fall down. I have no idea what they're called. Are they like the the little stamen? Is that what they are? I don't know. Um, I sound, <laughs> sound so intelligent right now. Um, so I'm just fixing those shapes. I went off camera there a little bit, but you didn't miss much. Um, and I'm just cleaning that up so it's more of a, sometimes you got to just you blow out the ink and then clean up the shape fix it after um, and define it rather than try to define it right away sometimes it's just easier to just try to fix that shape This one is a marigold, a French marigold. It doesn't really look like marigolds that I have around here, um, other than the colors. So this flower uh, didn't really turn out. So you're gonna see how I just kind of work with it anyways. And I just keep trying and keep struggling. Um, and because the reason why I'm showing you this is because really with this you just keep working it and alcohol ink is kind of intimidating sometimes but uh, really you there's no mistakes because you just turn it into some abstract thing um i did manage to make it look like a flower i think um i'm not sure if it looks like a marigold i think it looks more like um oh i don't know what that flower is it's like more uh, frilly um Maybe it's the kind of marigolds we have here. I don't know. Anyways, you can tell me in the comments below. <laughs> uh, by the way, I have to tell you how to uh, enter the giveaway. You have to watch every video in the playlist, which I will link to above. And um, you have to comment on every video in the playlist. Uh, this is the alcohol ink giveaway playlist that I just linked to. You have to comment on each video. You have to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on each video, and you have to be subs subscribed to me. So uh, that must be on each video of the playlist. And then your name will be entered for every comment you leave, as long as they aren't spammy comments, and just as long as they're like legit comments where you have something actual to say. So back to my flower. At this point, I am needing to refill my blending brush. And my blending brush is just a water brush with my homemade blending solution in it. That's I call it a blending brush, but it's not technically a blending brush. Anyways, so you can see I'm really struggling with this flower. Back to here. Um, I've erased most of it now at this point. Um, I still got the center. <laughs> and yeah, so now I'm just scribbling. <laughs> And that actually worked out so much better. I had such a better um, response with this. I don't know if it was the type of flower or if something just went crazy, but that's what happens. And um, I'm actually happened with I'm actually happy with the end result that I got. Um, and it, it almost kind of looks like a peony, like an open peony, just not as round. Um, it's got that kind of look. 
Uh, whenever I paint peonies, they're always like more closed, um, which I do have some peonies at the end of this video that I'm painting, um, speaking of. But um, I just kind of, I still wanted the red and the yellow. And so I'm just trying to figure out a way to add yellow. And I, I keep having to dry it off because the yellow won't, the it's not dry enough. And now I'm just kind of adding in a few little details. You have to be really careful when you do this. I kind of, I think I might have gotten a little bit carried away, but I really wanted to just, uh, just kind of pull out some of those details. Um, I guess it could also be, no, it's not a carnation. Never mind, it's not a carnation. Um, and this one is uh, lavender. And I think a field of lavender maybe looks more interesting, but I just did one kind of bushel. It's not really a bushel. Anyways, um, I've actually never painted lavender before, which is weird. Uh, so I just followed kind of the main shape and just added some purples and blues. It's basically my whole plan here. And picking out some different shapes and just just making the outside look kind of scattered and whatever but in general have the shape where it kind of goes out at the bottom and then starts uh, coming together at the top or getting skinnier at the top and yeah I'm just adding a bunch of colors <laughs> so I just wanted to try this and I thought okay if it totally doesn't work I won't include this in the video but all the flowers I did paint uh, you are seeing so there was nothing I kept out of the video so there you go and I actually really like how this works I started at the top blowing out um, because I wanted the top to be lighter and the bottom to be darker so if I start from the dark from the bottom then I feel like maybe all the ink will start getting to the top um, and then the bottom will be lighter and so I just thought, well, that's the way I'll do it. And I think it worked out good. But now I've got to work on this shape because it kind of just looks like a boring purple shape. So I'm adding some blending solution to maybe bring out some shapes. And I'm really just kind of experimenting. You're basically just watching me kind of play around here and figure out what to do. I'm not sure if I love the end result of it, but it was fun to try. And... Um, you know, I'd have to work on the details a little bit more. Now I'm taking a Q-tip with blending solution on it and trying to define the outside to make it a little bit more interesting so it doesn't just look like some kind of pointy oval. <laughs> and then I've got some more dark shapes I'm putting in just to bring in some um, shadows. So, yeah, I'm just trying to define the shape a little bit more. Let me know how you think about this. Like, I just don't think it's interesting enough. And I think a, a lavender field with like a nice sunset behind it makes a much better painting or anything, a much better scene than just one lavender bushel. I'm gonna call it a bushel. <laughs> Next up is tulips and uh, I have painted a few I think I have one acrylic painting I do I'll link to it right now and I have a watercolor tulip painting and I'll link to that right now anyways as you can see I am just using kind of a orange dark orange to paint the outline and then putting in that light light orange to fill it in and I'm doing, I'm trying to do some different shapes of tulips, some that are more open, some that are closed, some that are kind of open, uh, starting to open. And um, I'm putting those little stripes in there because that might show up. I'm not sure if it will and it doesn't. But um, I actually really liked these because I used that blending solution to really bring out those petals, like opening up. It really, you can really bring in the shadows and highlights and then um, the stems of course because they're nice and long and thick so I wanted to put in the stems 
and I really like how this painting turned out actually even though I did make a huge mistake in it um, or just a miscalculation is that a mistake kind of um, so now I'm adding blending solution which is where my mistake comes in and I really like how I'm just pushing this the stem into the tulip that looks really good love that and now I'm just loosening up those tulips and blowing them out a little bit so that they're not so and here is where my mistake comes I must have added too much blending solution and just went crazy you can see right there as soon as I move my hand like look at that what a mess and it was looking so good Janelle what'd you do um so instead <laughs> I'm ignoring my problem and I'm fixing the stems is pretty much what's going on there and now I'm just trying to dry that off and redraw my tulip I don't think it turned out looking as good as what it did at first but I'm still pretty happy with it and I'm definitely gonna be painting some more tulips because they turned out awesome and with the stem with the green in there it looks so good And last but not least is peonies yay one of my favorite flowers and yay the video is almost done this video has gone on way too long like I, we're already at 37 minutes this is ridiculous I'm gonna have to split this video up <sighs> anyways um, as you can see this is super rudimentary look at what I'm doing there really seriously anyone can do that um, the most difficult part of this is just knowing how to apply the blending solution really that's all it is and that's with any of these flowers uh, the pink one went kind of weird the yellow one worked out good the orangey red one turned out good too but the pink one went I don't know what happened to it um, so you'll see me kind of work with it and try to get it fixed maybe I just don't like the color I don't know um, I just don't it's just not working um, so I have painted a couple of peonies those are also on my um, on my YouTube channel sorry I had a blank there <laughs> I glitched out um, it's a watercolor video so you can check that out and here I am still working with this pinky purple flower and I have added some green in there and I just just made a bunch of marks with Sharpie like you can see I'm not even doing anything like I'm just I'm just laying down ink so if you think about it rather than drawing some amazing thing you're just laying down some ink and then you can kind of use the brush to form some cool shapes um, and now because this is the last video I wanted to try again with some actual alcohol ink bottles droppers so I'm using some green in there and that forms some really cool shapes um, with the dark and then I'm taking my DIY gold um, that's the white the snow cap because I forgot that I made my own DIY white um, alcohol ink so you can check that out there's all the videos you can check out <laughs> I can't link to everything um, well I could I guess um, <laughs> but uh, I do use my DIY white one when I remember that I have it here's the DIY gold one and this is kind of in place of the mixatives it's 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 more like paint it's not as flowy because I made it more thick but I could make it more flowy flowy if I put some flow aid in it and just put some more alcohol with it and I also have another video where I'm doing some more metallic stuff with alcohol inks so that's coming up um, and that was my DIY ink that I or my DIY white alcohol ink um, it's kind of opaque but it works exactly the same as the snow cap from Adirondack or Ranger works um, my DIY white one so definitely check out that video and now I'm just playing around with the green and the gold and just whatever because I finally fixed that pink one by adding white to it and it made it a lot more subtle and that was better because the other peonies are a lot more subtle and so I think that one was just too standing out too much and I just wanted kind of like a mess of greenery in there and which is what I've got and I just wanted the greenery to kind of 
go in front of the flowers and whatnot. And I wanted um, the gold in there because who doesn't want gold in their peonies? <laughs> Am I right? So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you will try these techniques and please leave a comment and uh, subscribe to me if you enjoyed my video and if you want to enter the giveaway and I will see you on the next video.